Hello friends and family and welcome to the Global Pandemic Crippling Anxiety Fireside Chat. Today we are going to talk about Headspace. A friend of mine asked what I thought of Headspace and I had actually never used it before. And so I thought, what the heck, I'll download it and I'll have a look and I can formulate a bit of an opinion. Uh, I should caveat all of my opinion with I am extremely skeptical of any meditation instruction which costs money. I think it's important to know that meditation is an extremely serious endeavor. You can hurt yourself and people have by trying to self-educate, use apps. Um, as I said to my friend, learning meditation is not like learning Korean cooking. You don't learn it from YouTube videos. Um, you should find a qualified teacher if you want to take your meditation practice seriously. Um, in that respect, I am quite cautious about something like Headspace, which is commercial and has a lot of paid content. Uh, I think that that is indicative that the teachers have not actually had very deep meditative uh, states themselves or meditative experiences because had they, they most certainly would not charge money um, for the meditation instruction that they're giving. With that caveat in place, <laughs> um, this is the Headspace app as I've installed it. And uh, you note when you install the app that there are three buttons on the bottom major buttons. One is meditate, one is sleep, and the other is move. And what I found interesting is that move and sleep actually have six categories of uh, multimedia content available in them. And meditate only has four. And Although I, I really did enjoy rain day antiques out of the sleep section, I, I think that this is indicative of what Headspace really is. And I think that it would be safer to classify it as more of a relaxation and sleep app than necessarily a meditation app. There simply isn't that much instruction to give when it comes to meditation and the harder, the more difficult instruction comes much later. Once you've meditated a lot, you will have uh, questions that you need to ask a teacher and you will need bi-directional communication there. You won't be able to learn those things from an app. You probably won't be able to learn them from a book. So in that respect, I actually think that Headspace is kind of okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it being a, a sleep aid or a relaxation aid because those things are generally not very dangerous. You're not going to get yourself into a lot of trouble by using a sleep aid to go to sleep um, or by mindful exercises or any of those sorts of very external sort of things um, because those things are not meditation. They, they're not even close to meditation. Um, so there's, there's very little danger there. Um, personally, I found, I found the sleep aids very difficult. Uh, they're quite saccharine. They're cute, um, but they are a little too much. Um, I found that I had set the sleep uh, music thing to one hour and I couldn't make it through 25 minutes. I had to turn it off so that I could sleep properly because I don't really need something squishing out the rest of my day to um, just feel natural and sleep naturally with whatever white noise happens to be in the room, a fan or something like that. But if you do need that, um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that whatsoever. And I do think that it would be healthy to try to move away from external props and external aids and to sleep naturally when you can, but if you're lying there in bed awake and anxious and you can't sleep for hours and hours, then a sleep aid is uh, certainly um, 
not doing you any harm, especially if it works. Um, so in that respect, I, I think that Headspace is perfectly fine as a sleep and relaxation aid. Um, I did listen to one of the, well, a couple of the guided meditations. Um, I would go so far as to describe them as not really meditation. Uh, they're extremely active, right? So you begin with your eyes open and you're controlling your breath and then you close your eyes and you're feeling your breath and then you're listening to things and you're feeling your body and you move your attention around and then you are back on the breath and then you open your eyes and all within the span of 10 minutes. Um, and so I, I think that uh, because it's so active, and so colorful. This isn't a practice that you could possibly make intuitive. Um, something that you can do on your own, something that you can do silently. Um, and it may get you to that point, the app, but um, I, I don't think that all of this extra light and color is necessarily uh, required. That said, there's no, there's no harm in coming outside in as I've described before. So if you want to begin your meditation practice with more props and more paraphernalia, if you want to burn incense and you want to do all these, go ahead, uh, do those things. But try to work your way toward something centered, a single meditation object, a meditation that you can do without instruction, without reminders, and without any props, without any paraphernalia, without any special environment. Um, and you can do that over time, but you could use something like Headspace as uh, a tool to begin with to get kickstarted if you're finding that um, 10 minutes of following your breath is simply too boring or you get too distracted or it's not really helping you. Um, this is not necessarily a bad place to start. I, I like to bring up this example because uh, I think that it demonstrates that there are many different ways of going about um, teaching meditation. And that is the example of Lethi Saitha. He um, is the oldest known contemporary teacher of Vipassana meditation in the Vipassana tradition. And he wrote a book, which when translated into English, the title is The uh, Manual of Mindfulness of Breathing, or The Manual of Anapana. Um, and it is a, quite a bit more colorful than uh, the instruction that you would hear from S.N. Gwenka. He, uh, Lady Saitha, says, um, oh, okay, you can follow the breath all the way down into the stomach, and you can see how the breath feels inside the body, and then you... Over time, weeks and weeks, months and months, you tighten up this awareness of the breath to this narrow area over time. And you work your way outside in to something small, to something narrow, to something specific. Um, and so this is S.N. Goenka's teacher's teacher's teacher. And um, it goes to show that there are a lot of different paths in, but the... Uh, the ultimate aim is usually the same. You're trying to find a single meditation object that you can focus on without any external instruction whatsoever um, for an extended period of time and to try to prolong your attention on that singular meditation object. And that is difficult, and especially uh, when we're facing exceptional difficulties like we are now, if you are trying to start a meditation practice, that's not always the easiest way to go, just to jump straight to the nose and, oh, okay, I'm only going to follow the breath just under the nostrils. Um, and so there is definitely no harm in starting further out. Um, but I would encourage you to try to come closer and closer to the center over time. Uh, simplify your practice over time and lose the props over time if you can. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I will put up the, the same Anapan 
uh, instruction vid instructional videos um, or videos on how to download the audio instructions for simple Anapana um, in this video. And you can download both apps and try them both out and see which one works well for you. Uh, you can maybe try one for a week and try the other for another week. Um, at these early stages of your meditation practice, it's important to explore and find out what works for you and what does not. Um, so you can use this as an opportunity to do that. All right, everyone, before the power goes out on me again, I will close the video. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves and taking care of your loved ones. I look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. Goodbye.